Alright, good morning Internet. Uh, the purpose of this video today is basically to give an update on uh, the uh, the translation project of Fujita Seiko's Tori no Jutsu, or Zukai Hojo Jutsu. Um, it's going well. Um, there isn't much to say because I'm still working on the first couple of chapters. I do have a couple of chapters throughout the book finished, but uh, uh, but of course the first three chapters or so is just giant blocks of text, so there's not a lot I can say about that. It covers some history, some details, what kind of rope is used, uh, some brief theory on various things, but uh, um, but yeah, so that's basically the stage that I'm working on now. I'd like to get the blocks of text out of the way. Once I can get to the chapters that are focused on the various Ryuha, uh, I should be able to just start dying through it rather nicely. Um, my particular decision on how to go about formatting all the images and whatnot, I haven't decided on yet. I am uh, consulting with several people that have done similar projects, but um, uh, but as it is now, it pretty much looks like uh, uh, a polished up version of what you see in the example chapter I posted on GoFundMe.com. Um, so yeah, it's going at a decent pace. Uh, I'm rather happy with how it's going. Uh, luckily, most of it's modern English, so and, or modern Japanese, so it's not exactly uh, super challenging. But at the same time, it is giant blocks of text. So I mean, once it starts getting to like two or three in the morning, and you're just looking at walls of kanji, and you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so luckily I'm nocturnal. But I mean, gotta gotta keep the coffee intake coming the whole time. Um, Alright, the other part of this video is I'm actually going to talk about what's called Kanawa. Uh, kan is basically uh, Japanese for a metal ring. Uh, I've only seen two uh, spellings or two pronunciations of this. There's uh, Kan and Wa. Kan is the Onyomi and Wa is the Kunyomi. Uh, I've seen that character for Wa. Well, I've seen Kan or Wa. It's the same character, right? Different pronunciation. Um, I've seen it used in the context of Wajutsu, uh, that particular character, in which case it would basically mean uh, a technique involving, or a technique or a method involving the metal ring. So uh, presumably this refers to a metal ring, metal ring with rope. I doubt you're going to sit there and be like, I'll fight you with this. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, in short. Uh, several of the traditions in the Hojujutsu book that I'm working on um, deals with the ring on a short rope or on a hayanawa and uh, yeah it makes for an interesting little uh, toy because you're basically substituting the slip knot. wouldn't make a perfect substitution because it behaves differently but um, but it kind of fulfills the same role, and that is that when you're dealing with uh, uh, making a quick knot of some sort, or making a slip knot of some sort, it works out like that. Now mind you, I've got a slip knot holding it on. Normally they use uh, hibari musubi, so I'll use that for the longer rope. So as you can see, it's basically like a slip knot with a lot of give to it. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about pinching uh, the skin for when you're training with partners. I mean, if you're arresting someone with rope, you're probably not too concerned about how badly you're gonna pinch them. Frankly, you've probably hit them already. <laughs> so, or twisted a limb or something. So as you can see, it's basically uh, a slip knot. It serves the purpose of a slip knot. Wrap it up, do whatever. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's on the Hayanoa. Let's get this guy off here. Oh, look. Actually, I made a hibari musubi, a skylark's knot, in English, All right? So, in the case of honnawa, uh, I still prefer to, to keep the rope folded. It makes for all sorts of convenient uh, uh, situations, for example, getting a hibari musubi rather quickly and easily. Um, <clears throat> and similar goes for the ring. Mm. Alright, so there's Hibari Musubi, I'll post pictures later because it, frankly it's nice and symmetrical and looks nice um, and it's a very useful tie or not. 
right? So, as you can see, that's basically how it works. It's pretty much the same as the, the high and the quick rope, but in this case, it's on a 28-foot rope. <laughs> Alright, and as an example of how we can utilize this, I'll use my leg here. Really got to get some partners for these videos, eh? Slight tangle. There we go. Boom. All right. So voila. Got ourselves heat body and CB holding on the Kanmela. All right, and you can loop it around. Do whatever you like. All right. Now, generally in Hojo Jitsu, you don't have a big honking like the rope like that. You keep it in a bundle and you work on the open end. Um, I like being able to swing it around like that. That's just my own personal preference. Ties like this, travel up the body. You see this in the uh, the tortoise tie of uh, uh, Kentoku View, one of the later chapters in the Hojo Jitsu book. All right, where are we here? Ah, I see. I see. I see. I see. So normally this would go up arms, but I mean, I need my arms to tie the knot, so. Too bad. <clears throat> Make it here. All right. So you'd have one at basically like the forearm, the elbow, the tricep, around the neck, and then down the other side. It makes for a very pretty little tie that has a lot of uh, uh, hanging points where you can tie other rope or hook other items onto. Um, and yeah, so that's that's just an example of how you can use the uh, the kanmela. Uh, similarly. You don't necessarily, oops, that better so it doesn't go anywhere. So, similarly, you can run the rope back through the, the ring. As long as there's the rope's thin enough and there's enough room on the ring, you can keep running it through. So it became, becomes kind of a focal point for the entire uh, body tie. All right, so you've got it tied off again. All right, we can do other such things. Like so. Create a handle with which to handle the prisoner. Oh, I can't lose. <laughs> the thigh's not a great uh, tie off point for this. Boom, boom, boom. You know, you're picking up the rope all the way up so you've got a proper handle. Um, I think it's enough self time for now. <laughs> so, in any case, that's the, uh, the metal ring. Uh, I don't see too many people that have actually utilized this, but uh, it makes for some interesting variations. It's a neat way to, to be able to change the direction of the rope on a body and, uh, and do various other creative elements. Um, and there are examples in one of the traditions found in Fujita Seiko's book where there's a tie that's just simply impossible unless you utilize a ring. Uh, judging by the illustration, it would be a much larger ring than the one I have here. But nonetheless, uh, they don't illustrate the ring in the picture. But when once once you have the suggestion that the ring is used there, and then you look at the image, you'll be like, oh yeah, no, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I've actually got a friend that figured out the tie too. And I'll see if he'll let me post the, uh, the image here. Uh, because, frankly, it's a very interesting tie. It's pretty. And, uh, and it's unorthodox, at least unorthodox by uh, Western standards. I don't know how common these types of things are in Japan. Alright, so that's, uh, that's an example of the use of the Kanmela. And uh, yeah, the project's going well and smoothly. I'm quite satisfied with the speed at, the, at its going. And uh, I have uh, uploaded a, uh, a sort of uh, progression of the contents of the book and, uh, and its stage of translation on uh, the GoFundMe.com site. Um, any questions or comments, post them in the description below the video, or send them to my Facebook page, hit me on Twitter, any of the venues, send me an email. I'm available on basically every social network. So any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, so on and so forth, shoot me a line. Uh, I'm happy to explain any perspective of my work as uh, I believe firmly in both honesty and transparency. And 
Yeah, I look forward to feedback.